Okay, so this is just for fun, right? As all physics are. Uh, so in the introductory course, you do things like finding the electric field due to a long uh, charge or rod of charge. You do a full ring, but what about a half ring? So let's find the electric field due to this half ring, and I'm going to do it uh, find at at this point right here in the center of the half ring. So and I put electric field equals actually that's a question mark vector, right? Because you have to have vectors on both sides. I'm just being funny. Okay, we got to start off with a little bit of fun, right? So really, the problem here is there, you know, if you say I'm going to need to find the electric field due to a ring equation, and then cut that in half, that doesn't work. Okay. Um, and in fact, if you had the full ring, the electric field due to the whole thing would be zero right there in the center, because all the, the electric fields due to all the pieces add up in the same direction, and it cancels. So there's only one equation for electric field, and it looks like this. This is the electric field due to a point charge. So we have one over four pi epsilon naught, that's the uh, electric constant, that's the electric field constant. The value of the charge, r hat is a vector, so if I have a positive charge right here, and I wanna find the electric field right here, then I have this is the vector r, and e would be in the same direction, and r hat is a unit vector pointing in that direction. Okay, so that's what we have. So here is a ring, well, the best thing to do is to break it into a whole bunch of pieces. So if I pretend like this is a series of tiny charges, I'll call them dq, then I can find the electric field due to this piece right there and then just add up all the electric fields. So if I look right here, I know how far away that is and I know that the electric field would be pointing this way, I'll call it de. Right, because it's not the total electric field, it's just a little tiny piece of electric field. And then I could go ahead and do that for all the pieces. Um, so I, 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 in my previous way I did this, I called that the angle theta, but that probably wasn't the best bet, but I can't stop now, I'm already very committed, right? Um, you see the problem though, as I move along here, the, the magnitudes of these stay the same, but the directions don't. So if I pick, uh, I have to add up all these vectors of different directions, and that's kind of tough. So when we have tough things in physics, we like to cheat, okay? And I don't like tricks. Um, you could do this without a trick, but if you can see the symmetry in the situation, then that's not, that's not so bad. So if I take this piece right here, and then I take a corresponding piece down here, and I calculate the electric field due to this one, so let's call this uh, dq top, and we'll call this dq bottom. They have the same, this is, this is top, de bottom. They have the same magnitude because they're same distance away, and they make the same angle with respect to the x-axis. So if I add this vector plus that vector, I'm only going to get an x component. The y components cancel. Any piece I pick up here, I could pick a piece down here such that the y components would cancel. So that means that uh, I can find just the x component of the electric field. So let's write an expression. So if this is the angle theta, then this is the angle theta because these two lines are parallel. I mean intersecting. They're not parallel. Uh, these are corresponding angles. So this, let me draw it in red, the x component is right here. And so that angles theta, so that's going to be the sine of theta. So let me write an expression for the electric field due to dex. And I'm actually going to write it like this. It's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Instead of q, I have, d, I have 2 dq, okay? Because I'm using two of these charges at the same time. So I'm going to say 2 dq. I don't need to use r hat. That only has this magnitude of 1, and it's pointing in the x direction anyway. Uh, the magnitude of r is this big r squared. Now I need to multiply that by the sine of theta, right? Because if I have e sine theta, that gives me the x component, and that's it. So this is my uh, electric field due to these two pieces right there. Now I just need to add up all the pieces from here down to there. I only, I only need to go from theta is 0 to pi over 2 because I've already included these in my calculation. 
So you see here I have a differential. I can integrate both sides and I get, uh, if I integrate over all the dx's, I just get ex. And then I get, uh, I'm gonna pull this, some of these things out front. Let's pull out uh, two over four pi epsilon naught r squared. Those are all constant. And I have theta equals zero to theta equals pi over two of dq sine theta. But you see now we're, we have a problem because I can't integrate this. You know, I have my theta is changing as I go along here and, and dq is my integration variable so they don't match. Uh, and I have limits in theta too, so I have a problem. Okay, so let's get an expression relating dq and theta. So let me just draw, redraw my diagram right here, just that part. So let's say I have uh, a small piece of d theta. So I, that gives me a little piece of the pi. And that will give me a little segment here that has a length of ds equals r d theta, right? So, okay, I skipped a little bit here. But this, if I have uh, a small tiny wedge where this angle inside here is d theta, the length of this is r, then the uh, arc length is r d theta. And that's true for any angle, really. So that's how long that is. But now what charge does it have? Well, let's consider the whole thing. The whole thing has a charge plus q. So it has a charge of uh, plus q. I can define the linear charge in C as the total charge divided by the total length. So how long is this? Well, if it's a half of a circle, it'd be pi times r. So if I take this pi times r divided by r, that gives me the linear charge density. Now I know I have this little piece right here. I can find it has the same linear charge density. So lambda is going to be dq, that's a q, over ds. So it's going to be dq over r d theta, and that equals this, q over pi r. Now I can solve this for dq. So I get dq equals, I'm just gonna multiply both sides by r d theta, r q d theta over pi r, and the r is cancel. And which is good, right? Because I want, I get q, oh wait, that's a d theta. Sorry, I get q d theta over pi, and that, no, yes, <laughs> that does have units of charge, right? Because I want this to be still a charge. But now I can take this and substitute this in up here. Let's switch papers. So let me rewrite uh, ex equals 2 over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared, and then I had uh, zero to pi over two. Now I have dq, okay? So I need to put in, instead of dq, I'm gonna put this, q d theta over pi sine theta. Done with that. Okay, I can factor out the q over pi and I get two q over, I'm gonna leave this as four pi epsilon naught uh, then I have pi r squared, zero to pi over two, sine theta, d theta. Now I can integrate, right? Because now I have uh, the integration variable and the other variable in the same match, they match, so I can integrate this. So if I integrate, what I can do the antiderivative of sine theta. So what do I take the derivative of that gives me sine theta, and that'd be negative cosine theta. So this is gonna be all this stuff, two q over four pi epsilon naught pi r squared, and then I get negative cosine theta from zero to pi over two. So this is gonna be two q, I have to rewrite it, I don't know why, because I think I'll make a mistake otherwise pi r squared, and then I'm gonna get this evaluated at pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, minus cosine of negative cosine of, of zero, so that's one. So that whole thing is just gets one. So that's it. That's my x component of the electric field. 
now if I want to write it as a whole vector, I just I can just write e equals. I know that there's no y component, so I'll just put this down two q over four. Actually, I'm going to write it like this. I like to write it like this. E equals one over four pi epsilon naught. That's my constant, and then I have two q over pi r squared, the vector one zero zero. Or if you want to write this as in terms of x hat or y hat, whatever makes you happy, because it's about you being happy. Okay, but that's the answer. Now, let's check, right? It should have the same units as my electric field due to a point charge. So it should be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I got that. Q over R squared. So I have Q over R squared. I do have the right units. 2 doesn't have units. Pi doesn't have units. So this has the right units. That's good. Uh, another thing that we normally check is what happens when you get really far away. I can't do that, right? Because I can't move this point. If I move this point over here, it's a completely different problem. And I'll show you that in just a second. So I can't. What I could do is, uh, and I'll leave this as a homework problem, because it's not that much harder. What if I have a ring that looks like this? Not even a half ring, but a partial ring. So if, let's say this is an angle, I'm gonna move this as an angle theta, which is a bad idea. Let's call that not, let's call that alpha. And so that's half of the, the arc. And so if I get an expression, I leave alpha in there, I can take the limit as alpha goes to zero and it should give me the equation for a point charge, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna set up a problem that is really tough. So let's say I have my ring It has the same radius r. And now I want to find the electric field, let's say even right here, right there, okay, on the x-axis. Well, if I take my point charge right here, dq top, and I find the, the this is my r, r top. This is my de top. Cool, right? Uh, actually, I changed my mind. This one's not impossible. This one I actually think you could do. I could match that with one down here like this, and I could find, I just realized I, sh I should do this problem. Okay, and this is our bottom, and they are still the same distance from this point, so the uh, y components do cancel, so that's good. Okay, but now imagine I want to find an electric field right down here. That's tough, because here and here they're not the same magnitude, they're not the same direction. So I'd have this electric field and that electric field. This is a tough problem. But you can do this numerically, and I do it numerically, and I'll, I'll make a video showing how to do that. And the, the basic idea is just to break this into a finite number of pieces, not an infinite, and don't actually integrate. Do a numerical calculation, I'd break this into a finite number of pieces, and for each piece, I would calculate the electric field and then just add them all up manually. And it's a lot of work, and so I'm going to make a, a Python program do it because I don't want to do that work myself. But that's how you would do this one. This one, I think you can get and you can integrate, and maybe I'll do that sometime in the future when I get bored. But I'll stop there.